Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, like, uh, you know, at one stage in one's life, one was, you know, if people gave me a compliment, you know, I'd be very happy, or if someone said something horrible, I'd be disconnected. But then, after like a spiritual awakening, there seems to be an immunity, or much more of an immunity, for having this huge up and down, whether I get compliments or told I'm not good. You see, one of the th there's a few th there's a few things, and uh, there are, there are some subtleties to this. And spiritual awakenings are also another topic as well uh, to do, rather than slow spiritual growth. Um, now, you see, when when you're in the ego, when you're in those lower levels of ego, you're you know, let's say there's huge levels of repressed feelings, fear. There's a lot of negative thinking going on and the perception of world is a certain certain way. So it's going to be like um, the ego takes things very personally um, and so and also it you know the ego tends to be very much outwardly focused on the world getting its n needs met and its things and it's set you know it very much has like when I was in you know in addiction you know, like, if I got what I thought I needed, then I'd be very, very happy. And if I didn't get what I thought I needed, I'd be very, very miserable. Like, if I got a promotion, I'd be very, very happy. If I didn't get a promotion, I'd be very, very unhappy. If I got a compliment, I'd be very, very happy. If I didn't get a compliment... And it's like the world seems to affect me very, very strongly, with the ups and downs. If I got the donuts, I'd be very happy. If I didn't get the donuts, and uh, wouldn't I be very, very unhappy? There's this, like, this stark, almost like this craving that the world gave me validation to get a, a, an upper. And if the world didn't give me what I thought I wanted from the world, didn't go my way, there'd be very, very much of a downer. So this very much, almost like I'm trying to grab sustenance from the world with everything that's going on. And uh, so it was very much a roller coaster ride in whether I was getting approval or not approval or getting a... Uh, 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 getting a, a, a pay rise or if someone else was getting a pay rise it was very much like these ups and downs and the, the, my ego was very much focused on getting things I thought were good for me and staying away from things I thought were bad for me Hawkins would call them the attractions and aversions within the world were very strong so yes, praise very good uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, judgments from others very bad um, and the reason for that is um, there is no connection to source. There is no inner connection to source. And so, remember, uh, we talked about how Ramana describes um, when, when there's no connection to source and your ego is activated and you want something, and we're also, um, my ego is also co um, connected to the collective. So I'm also like just a standard ego in the collective. Like most people in the collective like uh, praise and they don't like, you know, criticism. That's just a human collective thing. That's how we're all mostly wired. So I have all these programs. So, but there's no connection to the infinite inside. So it's very much like if I think like, and I have programs which are my personal programs, like the courses, I have collective programs from the collective. So... I'll, and I'll respond in those same ways. And when I'm very disconnected, no connection to the source or the light of God within, these polarities are very extreme, depending on how level the, le the, the level of consciousness. So, what would then happen is, um, uh, as Ramana, I'll just say what Ramana said, so that sort of illuminates it. Like, if I have a thought that uh, donut, I, 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 I like donuts, or happiness is, lies in donuts, then really by having that program or wanting that thing from the world, if I'm not having the thing I want, then I am actually disconnected from God. I, and I'm, I'm in a state of distress, like there's no donuts here right now. There's no donuts here right now. How can I get donuts? I can't be happy until I get donuts. So that even though I'm not aware of it, I'm actually in a, in a state of ego distress. You know, I'm blocked off from source because this thought I need to, you know, I might have a thought going on right now, I need donuts, no donuts now. Also, I need a pay rise, no pay rise now. Also, this person didn't like me. So all these are like the vibrations going on, and they're like a, a disconnect, you know. And then if I get these little things, like, as soon as I get, like, oh, I haven't had donuts for three days, and as soon as I get the donuts, basically the ego shuts up, that program shuts up, 
and go silent. So that distress for one is gone. And now I get the thing that the ego wanted me to get. And I actually, because the ego goes silent for a while, I suddenly get a high. You know, and I, I get this like bliss. I, oh, I, I feel at one with the world. I feel this sense of relief and ease and comfort. You know, I'm eating the donuts. These donuts are magical. I just love everyone. And I'm eating those donuts. And uh, that actually is not from the donuts. That's actually because the ego shuts up and goes quiet. And you actually get a spiritual experience. I'm actually getting a spiritual experience of what it's like to have no ego for a few seconds by eating those donuts. Or I'm getting this sense of peace and connection by getting um, someone says oh you look really good today Sabir so suddenly I get like oh I was waiting for that person to tell me that so it's like oh I'm feeling so happy I love everyone it's like all of this stuff but that's not from that person saying that that's because my ego wanted that and has been secretly wishing for it and it goes silent now and you get this and this is the thing of entrapment by the ego or addiction is then the ego goes look aha Donuts do make you happy, so you need more donuts. Mm. Because the next time you eat a donut again, you'll feel that, that feeling of peace and comfort again. Or, mm. you know, oh, I like, I like you, because every time I see you, you tell me how good I look. You know, and then go, oh, I hope I see that person again. Oh, I feel good again for the rest of my day. And you mm. told me again that I look good. So, so that's mm. the way the... And then the ego becomes addicted. And then the thing is, later on, it, it, it works less and less. And then, you, and then you don't get the reward that you got in the early days. So that's the thing. So really, when you feel happy because your ego gets something, it's because your ego is going silent. The thing in itself doesn't have the power to make you happy. Like alcohol isn't the substance that's making you happy. It's like your ego going silent for a while is making you happy after some alcohol, some drugs, uh, a bag of donuts, um, or someone giving you a compliment or a pay rise, or you've got the job you thought you wanted. So what happens, and so you have this big up and down dualistic ups and downs and highs and feelings of spiritual wellness when you get the thing the ego wants. And then if you get the thing the ego doesn't want, then you feel really disconnected, really bad, very grouchy, uh, whatever it is. So as you start, you know, if you get like, uh, because the question was around having a spiritual awakening, if you have a profound spiritual awakening, Basically, you are at a certain level of consciousness where, you know, your ego mechanisms are very, very extreme with praise, with donuts, with drugs, with alcohol, with pay rises. And so you get this, when you get the things your ego wants, you get this sense of happiness and oneness and bliss. And when you get things don't go your way, the ego wants it to go, you feel negative, down and gloom. But when you get... If you get a sudden spiritual awakening, it's like you're catapulted into another level of consciousness. It depends how, how high the level of consciousness has gone. If you go, if you're feeling these extremes of people giving you approval or not approval or criticism, and then you go to quite a high, relatively moderately high level of consciousness, then you'll find that what used to give you the ups and downs no longer does that for you. You're quite content and even keeled all the time. And there's not that big shift or any shift at all. It's like, basically what's happened is you're now, you're, you're at a new set level of consciousness. You're feeling quite happy and peaceful and even keeled most of the time. And you're now used to that. You're not aware, you're no longer at those low levels where you get these big ups and downs when your ego gets it down. So you're basically now, your experience is very odd because before when a person said, oh, you look good today, you feel really happy. And if no one said you look good, you felt quite miserable for it. And now, you're actually, you, what you're now aware of, you're used to being at this level of consciousness. And at this level of consciousness, things are much more stable because it's like the inner light and peace and stability. The light of, of divinity is shining forth from before the ego. So there's this greater evenness or this greater sense of peace and calmness throughout the day. And now you'll notice it'll be quite odd because people will say like, oh, you look really good today, Sabir, or you know, you're, you've got a bad hair day or whatever it is. And then you'll notice it doesn't affect you like it used to. You're feeling quite peaceful and serene. And it seems odd because you remember like, you know, before your spiritual awakening, these things used to have a dramatic effect. But now you're actually now, you dissolved a huge chunk of your ego and you're feeling quite peaceful and serene and things <clears throat> no longer have that huge... Uh, and as you get to higher levels of... If you go into those divine flow states, 
then uh, uh, or where the, it's like the peace and the presence is so strong uh, and there's a, the, the intensity of presence is so strong it's like that's at such a high level that nothing from the world you know like you've won the lottery it doesn't make any difference you know it's like uh, your, home, your home just got demolished okay you know that doesn't make any difference because the intensity of light or radiance from within is so high that you can't get into your head you can't make a story and anyway it's like the extremes you had when you're in ego when you're in ego you're down here and to have your ego deflate a bit is quite a marked thing if that makes sense because you're down here a bit of bliss is like an extreme thing but if you're already peaceful most of the time or if you're in bliss or ecstasy then you're more or less near the top level so you're not going to get an up and down even if things are taken away from you it's like you're still going to be on an even keel now there are some subtleties to that um, those come from belief systems but I wasn't asked the subtle question yet so I could I could go on there's different levels of spiritual experience and yep another thing I wanted to say is so, so there is a stark. This really explains that. So it, it was a spiritual awakening, and then I was catapulted into a different level. Yeah. I, I get that. Um, and now, sort of, the second part of that is if you take two examples. So, if my boss is at work is grumpy and he expects me to have a reaction, and I really don't, he then looks at me for that, and I just basically say, I just ignore you when you are like that, and I know that next time when we speak, you're going to be in a better mood. And this is my response, current response. And that, I genuinely mean that. And, you know, people are puzzled, like, you should be worried, and I'm not. But at home, with my partner, where the patterns are repeating itself for 12 years, <laughs> what I've found almost something happens. It's almost like we get on the surface into the same behaviour with one another, and the same, you know, shouting or raising our voices, and the same stories, same arguments repeat itself for 12 years. And I almost, I, I engage and say all the same things I've always said before my spiritual awakening, but there is a part of me, it's almost like the observer, that mm -hmm. says, that, that's talking to me and says, we're not even bothered about this. You know, it's like almost like looking at the actor mm -hmm. acting mm -hmm. out the same, yeah. Yeah. and I'm not sure what's happening to me. Does that, <laughs> does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, it's wonderful, it. but it's a bit... That's beautiful. So you're starting to get observation happening. Um, and then this is where I talk about subtleties. So to some extent, you can still be identified with the body and the story of, uh, of oneself as being real and being the, the locus of identity. You know, like, uh, like let's say sub there's, uh, there was the story of Sabir being his thinking in his body and, he, and the, his location was in his body and his thinking. And it seemed to be, while he was that, that he would, he would be talking from his body and his thoughts as, as a source of location. Uh, and when he was strongly in that, he would see other people as being strongly in their bodies and being located and having identity. Yes, uh, if that makes sense. Well, as you start to practice the observer, you start to gain these mystical experiences that the body and the thoughts are observed and are not you. So, and this becomes stronger and stronger, that actually the body is not me, and the, the, the stories of the thoughts that go on and all the personality of Sabir is not Sabir. I mean, it's, it's the identity of Sabir, but there is observing of that, and, and the story of Sabir and the body of Sabir is not what I am. I am that which is witnessing all of this, uh, which cannot be born, cannot be die, is not a thought, is not a story, and is not the body, is eternal. And this sense of presence, or infinite, or eternal, or undying presence, or observe, the observing field, becomes more and more the sense of who I am. And less, uh, and it starts to dissolve the idea that even the, the body and the whole stories that went on with the body was ever what you were. So you start to get these mystical experiences, and, and you get a switch over, and eventually you lose all faith that your story is you, and the body is you, and you have a a solidity that the infinite is what you are and these are just transitory things that come and go. You can be in an intermediate, intermediate phase or you can be going to spiritual groups where you get deep spiritual awakenings in the observer and, and your new, it's almost like your new identity becomes the witnesser 
or there's a, there's a knowingness that's really who you are. And there starts to be a, a loss that the story uh, and the body is really what you are. And there can be a switch over. And it, and it could happen like, you know, um, you're in situations with partners or people and the old story seems to act out that's been programmed through years and years of habitual responses. But there's also witnessing at the same time. And it's also not taking it so much personally. Mm. There's a watcher there that's watching it all unfold. But it's not really you that's um, this drama that's being witnessed to unfold is happening. So there's a level of detachment that also happens. Mm. So that's, uh, I would say, that's brilliant. You know, you're, you're going into switchover. And if you keep the spiritual work, uh, the personal stuff will dissolve more and more intensity. And then eventually, you know, it could happen that even uh, the, the memory of the story uh, and that, that, uh, that uh, whole drama of what one was and the body start to dissolve. And then there's a new orchestration that comes out of the infinite and that becomes stronger and stronger. But it's already a higher level of freedom than being in the body and in the story and taking things at a more visceral level. Like, you said this, and I said this, and I'm taking this person, and you, blah, blah, blah. Now it's like there's a watching of that, and it's more of a, it's more like a pattern that seems not yet to be released, that's still going on, but is watched. So I, I think that's a very, very good sign in showing great spiritual development. Mm. Can this happen to you without you practicing it? Can it just happen? Yes. Well, it's not that. I mean, I think if you go to spiritual groups uh, and you're starting to have mystical experience and you're around people in the observer, you, you, get thing, you can also get things by, you know, like osmosis. If you're in these high vibration uh, environments and you're with people who are strongly in the observer, you can start to get mystical experiences yourself without having uh, intended it. You know, like, uh, it'd be like, you know, you could end up with, they say like in, 12 step groups, you know, just keep coming back. You don't, don't worry that you have to, you, under, you don't understand it. They'll say, just keep coming back to the meetings, even if you're drinking, just keep coming back. And in the energy field, you know, the person keeps, they don't like it, they don't like, they suddenly get sober. And I don't know how I got sober, but I'm sober, you know. And it's like, if you're in the vicinity of people in the observer long enough or in groups long enough, you can start to have those experiences yourself. It's like, a, it's like the, the field is giving it to you. But there's also a thing that you go there, you know, is, is a strong intention. And you can start to get those mystical experiences. So if you, if you ever know, like, enlightened groups or enlightened people hanging around them, you just might get it by, by osmosis, you know, because they're so strongly. I guess that, that was the idea of the miraculous happening around Jesus, around people, you know. I mean, it's like... Yeah, you can't see, and then suddenly Jesus walks by, and you suddenly you can see. You know, did you do that? Did you do like I cancelled my belief in blindness for like three years? <laughs> yeah. You know, like oh, I've got a book. You know, it's like but somebody walks past you, and you can suddenly see. I mean, it's like that you didn't do the work, but it's quite handy that he was walking past. You know? <laughs> so that that is the you get it by you're lucky. Then you see, you seem you seem to be lucky. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you.